There is a God. He is alive. In him we live. And we survive. Let the church say amen this morning. We serve a, a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is leading whatever men may say. God is good to us. And we thank him for it. We are grateful to him for his goodness and his mercies that he bestow upon us each and every day. Thank God for seeing you here this morning. Pray that the things that we engage in in this time that we are together in worship will serve to help you in some way, will serve to benefit you as a member of the body of Christ in some way. So this morning, as we come to the end of this month, this year is just rolling on very fast. Before you know it, we will be celebrating a new one, and we'll be thankful for God for it, if it's his will. So as we come today, this is known as our family day, and we enjoy in the fellowship with one another, and we enjoy the festivities afterwards as we eat and we fellowship and we separate into our classes to learn more about how, we, how to become better at living with our families, living together as family. So it, it will be a joy for me today to spend this time, this extended time together with the saints. And we hope that all of you have planned to stay behind and fellowship with us. This morning, as I usually do, if you are fired up and ready to go for Jesus, say amen. amen. If you are fired up and ready to go for Jesus, Say it like you mean it. Say amen. Amen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Y'all mean that. Y'all mean you're all fired up and ready to go for Jesus. Because one thing I, I don't, some things I don't know and some things I do know. I don't know much about history. And sister, <laughs> my sister came in today and said, she, you know, I don't know much about history. And I don't know much about biology. I don't know much about the science book. And I don't know much about the Spanish I took. But what I do know is, is God loves you. That's one thing I'm assured of. And, and each day I live, I, I become more convinced of God's love towards me and towards each person that lives on this earth. I know that God love, loves you and me. And I know that if you love God like God loves you, what a wonderful world this will be. Because we serve a, 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 a mighty and a powerful, what a mighty God we serve. He can stop the wind. He can make this world spin. He is the only one can turn the sun down. My God is the only one who can make a man from the ground. The God that we serve, he reached into nothing, and he creates something. You know, the Bible says, the songwriter says, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. You know, we serve a, a mighty God. Such a wonderful God. You know, God can raise the dead. You know, God can do wonderful. He can part the sea. He can even make a man see. What a, what a mighty God he is. 
And as we come before in the presence of our mighty God, we recognize his awesomeness. So we enter in his, in, into his presence with thanksgiving. And we enter into his gates with praise. Because, of he's, because he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy to be praised this morning, brothers and sisters. And as we enter into this time where God's word is dispensed to us, let us pray to God that he, is, that he will help us to hear and to do what his word instructs us to. Let us pray. Father, we are so grateful and thankful to you this morning for all your many blessings that you bestow upon us. We ask you, dear God, that as your word is dispensed this morning, it will help those who are in darkness to find their way. It will encourage those who are downtrodden. It will help those who need to know a little bit more about you to find the answers to what they are seeking. And fathers, when it's all said and done, allow us to be doers of your word and not hearers only, deceiving our own selves. Bless us this day, in this hour, like only you can. We ask this prayer through your son's name. Amen. Amen. This morning, we're going to get right into it. And um, our scripture reading is coming from Romans chapter 12, verse number 1 and 2. And we, we looked at this last week. And uh, we looked at some things from this passage of scripture Last week, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Last week, we looked at and the topic was, Lord, have mercy on us, Lord. And, and one of the things that I, I, I wanted us to get from uh, that lesson is that because of God's mercies that is renewed to us every day, we should be willing to present ourselves to God every day. Because new mercies, the songwriter, see, I, uh, songwriter says, I see. Every day, new mercies I see. And because of that, we should be willing to present ourselves to God every day. That's a conscious decision each and every one of us need to make. Every day, God bless us with another day. See, those who are in relationship with one another, as husband and wife, have to commit to one another every day. They have to make a decision to be in that relationship with one another every day to, through the tough times, through the good times, through, through all the seasons of life. They have to commit themselves to one another every day. And us, there's no difference between us committing ourselves and making the decision to commit our lives to God each and every day. Yes, that's right. And he bless us with another one. That's right. Thank you. God's mercies are renewed every morning yes. to us. Yes. That's, that's what I wanted you to get in. And since that's God's mercies is are renewed every morning and we... We, why, and, I, and I made the statement that we need God's mercies to be renewed to us because someone need mercies because they, are, they have offended or have broken or, or have messed up the contract with God. Yes. And because we have uh, offended God by, by sinning, God needs to give us mercies yes. every day. So this morning, 
I want us to look at some things. One of the things we see in these two chapters is that the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1 and 2 used the word acceptable. He says that in verse number 1, he says that present your bodies holy and acceptable. Every time you see the word used twice like this, it means that this word is important to us. It means that we should take note of the word that is being used. In verse number, in verse number uh, uh, two, uh, uh, Paul tells us that we need to present ourselves holy. That's what is acceptable to God. In verse number one, I'm sorry. And in verse number two, Paul tells us how to, how to know that what we are presenting is holy. How to know what we are presenting to God is holy. As we look at chapter two, the Bible says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I propose to you this morning that when you prove something is good for you or helpful to you, you will renew your mind about it. Paul says to the Christian here that, that, that don't be, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. That you may be able to prove. The word I really want to look at this morning is the word prove. See, to prove something is to know something about it or to test it or to try it. And Paul says that, 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 that when your mind is renewed, you will be able to prove some things. And when you are able to prove some things, I believe your mind will be able to continue to be renewed. You understand what I'm saying? So they work together. They work together. When you are, when your mind is renewed, you will be able to prove some stuff. And when you prove some stuff, you will be able to have a different outlook on some stuff. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. So, so Paul says that you may able to be able to prove some things. Paul also tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 21, he says, how many things we need to prove? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prove all things. See, we are in the proven business, brothers and sisters. He said, Paul says, prove all things. But not only prove it just to prove it, but prove it to hold fast to that which is good. You know, when you prove you have a good wife, you just don't let a good thing go. Amen. You know what I mean? You just don't let a good thing go. You, you hold fast to a good thing. Because you prove that it's, it's good, you, you hold fast to it. Uh -huh. You know, I remember this time we were, were buying this car for, for my mom. And, 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 and when we were buying this car, this car, the, look, the, the car we didn't buy, the look real good on the outside, nice rims and, and it was all pretty nice pink job and everything tinted with it. Oh yeah, that's the one we want. But the car salesman says, no, we don't sell a car like that. You got to test it first. Uh -huh. Boy, when we jump in that car, we know that's not the car. That's, that wasn't the car we want. That stuff rolled like a tin can. <laughs> no, 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 no. He says, and this is why we allow people to test drive some stuff first. The car. So that they can, they can know that this is what they want. This is a good car. 
prove all things. We are in the proving business. When you prove some, uh, when you prove some stuff uh, is good, it helps you to know what is not good or not useful. When you prove some stuff uh, is good, it helps you to know what is bad. See, when you prove that, 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 that love is good, it helps you to let go of hate. See, when you prove that love is go good, it helps you to let go of fear. Amen. Because there is no fear in love. Amen. See, you are, when you prove some stuff is good, it helps you to know what is not good. So Paul tells us to prove all things. When you prove some things are good, it helps you to know what is not good. When you prove those who is for you, it helps you to know who is against you. So Paul says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. See, we have to prove, we have, we have to know when, when we prove that God is good for us, we will be willing to let go of this world. I'm going to say that again. When you prove that God and test that God is good for you, it helps you to let go of this world. See, when you prove uh, that, that, that God has always been there for you, it helps you to let go of the things that will hold you back. When you pr prove that peace is good for you, it helps you to let go of war. See, when you prove that something is good for you, it helps you to let go of other stuff that is no good for you. When you prove that joy is good for you, it helps you to let go of depression and recession. Because every time you have a recession, it brings on some depression. See, but when you prove that joy is good, you can have joy in every situation. It helps you in those times. When things are rough. When things are difficult. The topic of our lesson today is prove me this day. Prove me this day. The scriptural text is taken from Malachi Chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. In verse number 10, the Bible says, Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my, in, in my house, and prove me now, Wherewith said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour, out, pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. God says to, 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 to Malachi as he writes to the children of Israel, he says that uh, bring me the tithes into my storehouse. And you've got to understand why God is saying this to them. God is saying this to them. If you look up in verse number 7, he says this to them. He says, even from the days of your fathers, you have gone uh, astray from thine ordinance and have not keeping them. In other words, God is saying that you haven't been doing what I have commanded you to do. You haven't not been uh, doing the things I command you to do. And he says that one of the things that I've commanded you to do because you've been robbing me is to bring the tithes into my storehouse. See, these folks were not giving to the Lord what was his own. They were not giving God what is his own. And God says that I want you to prove me this day. That I will not open that I will not open the windows of heaven. Not later. I'm gonna open the windows of heaven now. 
And sometimes I think the message here for us, brothers and sisters, is that sometimes when life is difficult, when things are, are going bad, when we don't have enough of, of things that we need for this life, we tend to take back from God's own to use for stuff. And God is saying, if you prove me, I will come true for you. See, we think that God needs help in our situation. We think that God can't help us in those troubled times. We think that God is not there working for us. And God says, when you're supposed to be putting up and laying up in my storehouse for me to have meat in my storehouse, what you're doing with those things is you're doing those things for yourself. And you're using those things on your situation because you believe that I can't handle it. But he says to them, from your father's, you are not continuing in my ordinance. You are not doing what I command you to do. But I want to prove to you this day, if you continue no matter what situation you're facing, if you continue to do what I command you to do, I will pour out a blessing on you that you will not have room to, to keep it. And a lot of times we think God can't do that. Because our situation is too much of an emergency that God needs to, I need to take care of this and then I need to wait till I can get things together and then God can help me when I get some stuff together. Because God can't do this. You know, Sarah had the same idea that when God promised them a blessing of a son, uh, Sarah said, laugh. She laughed. She says, well, how can this happen <laughs> when I'm old? See, God can pour you out the blessing no matter your situation. You might not have anything in the bank, but God can, can, can make your situation okay and fix it for you. He's the, he's the fix-it God. So God said, prove me this day. In other words, try me. Try me. When your situation is real down, God says, try me. Have you tried God in your, in your desperate situations? Have you? See, God wants us as his people to try him. Amen. He don't want us to complain about it. He don't want us to worry about it. God wants us to try him. Amen. And folks will not learn that God wants to try, want us to try him. You know why God wants us to try him? Because God always trying us. Amen. God always trying us. God is always trying us. If you look with me in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 16, and, and let's look in verse number 4, God always trying his people. He's always trying his people. Exodus chapter 4, uh, 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 Exodus chapter 16 and verse number 4, the Bible says, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven, for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my laws or not. See, God is always trying us. See, God has brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by a mighty hand. He has showed them that he is God and there's none like him. When it rained down all these plagues on, on Egypt and the people over there, the children of Israel were spared all of them. That's something that you know that God has proven himself to you. God brought them out of the land of Egypt and then he, he brought them to the, the Red Sea. And Pharaoh and his army was behind him. God opened the Red Sea. And someone said that not only God opened the Red Sea, God brought the ground up for them to walk on. And they brought the ground up so they can walk over uh, the, 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 through the sea. And God drowned and killed Pharaoh and his army. And now they're on the other side of the Red Sea. Guess what they started to do? They started to complain. Look at verse number uh, three of that passage of scripture for me, brother, brother Jackson. They start to complain. And the children 
And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God that we have died by the hands of my Lord? Read. In the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh, pots, for to, the, to the fullest, read. Uh huh. They start to complain after God has done all of this for them. They state, you brought us out here to just kill us with hunger when we had food in Israel. So God says in verse number four that, that I'm going to let bread rain down from heaven. So the folks could go out. And not only am I going to let it rain down once, but I'm going to let it rain down every day. All I want you to do is go out and pick up enough for you to use that day. And I'm doing this for what reason? I'm proving it. I'm testing you to see whether will you will walk in my way. That's what I'm doing it for. To see whether you'll walk in my way. A lot of times God will allow us to go through some stuff just to see if we will stick with him. We'll stick with him. And a lot of us, when we start to go through some things, we, 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 we try to find comfort in everything else but God. And God allows us to go through some things to see whether we will walk in his way. God will let it rain down bread from heaven. The sea. Have God ever made some things come true to you? Amen. Have God ever brought you over some things that you know only God could do? Huh? Have God ever done some stuff? See, God says, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for you so that after you don't see that only me one could do it. No one else could do that. No one else could have let bread rain down from heaven. But sometimes when, 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 when it happened, and it happened too often, people begin that, to think, think that this is supposed to happen. Uh -huh. and, they, and they making this happen in some way. Uh -huh. You know, God allow bread to be able to come down from heaven so those folks who know only me, I'm the one who's doing this. I'm feeding you. And I'm testing you to recognize that, that since I'm feeding you, to see if you're going to continue to do my will. And then we get so complacent because God has been feeding us all the time. We, we, we start to want some more stuff. Okay, God, you're doing that? You're doing that? They complain about that. Now, let me see what else I can find to complain about. <laughs> Folks, every time you, they, you fulfill one thing, they get another thing to complain about. God fulfilled that, that need. Now they had another thing to complain about. They started complaining about that we have no idols and we have nobody, no leaders. And we, they started to complain about some, some stuff. They're always fine. And today we are the... Yeah, we are. We're just like God. Yeah. Right. Right. God will help us through this. And, and, and when we don't help us through this, we'll praise God. And when something comes along else, we'll think it's strange. Yeah. And we'll start complaining about that. Recognize that God is testing us to see if we will continue to walk with him. That's right, amen. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 2, brother. And thou shalt remember... All the ways which God, which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what's, what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandment or not. In other words, because they were disobedient to God, God allowed them to walk 40 years and room 40 years in the wilderness 
And God says, I did it to, to see what's in your heart. Check your heart out. See, God allow you to go through some stuff to just to see what's in your heart. He wants you to he allow you to go through some difficulty to see what's in your heart. In other words, that some folks say to see what you're made up of. All right. All right. Yeah, God will allow you to go through some difficult time. God will allow you to deal with some, some, some people who will just hurt you and put you in some pos positions that, 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 that you don't like. Just to see what's in your heart. Because when you start, when pressure start to come on you, you, you see what type of pipe you're made out of. It sees, you see what, what you're made out of when you, when you endure some pressure, when you have some heartaches, when you have some difficulties in life. It's God, you, you, you can see what a person is made out of. And God does the same thing. He says, I, I allow you to, to roam in the wilderness for 40 years so I can see what's in your heart. And I can see if you will continue to walk in in my way and keep my commandments so you, you one of the things we need to get from this God is testing us all the time all the time you might be going through some situations that you don't know why you're going through it you don't know how you get into it and you don't know why you're staying in it but God is testing you all the time he want to see if you will do what he tells you to do no matter what you're going through that's what God is testing you all the time and we need to know this and that's how we present something acceptable to God. See, if you have not been, you have not gone through some stuff, so you could present some stuff, you won't present the right stuff. Right. And God is testing us all the time to see if we will walk in his way. And I hear folks complaining about what they're going through. We need to thank God. Okay. Thank God. Yeah, yeah thank God. Uh, thank God for the trial, the fiery trials that I will try you. Don't, don't think it's strange. And what James says in James chapter 1? James chapter 1. What James says, brother, brother Jackson? In James chapter 1? I'm going off script. But what James said? James chapter 1? I could have quoted. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Count it, count it all joy when you fall into various temptations. Knowing what? The trial of your faith. Yes, sir. So let patience have his what? Warning. Nothing. See, God is testing us. And when he's testing us, we need to be able to count it all joy. Thank you, Lord, for the trial. I know you're going to see me through this. You should hear sometime how we pray to God. We pray to God like God don't know our situation. <laughs> you know, we pray to God like God don't know what's going on with us. He don't know what we're going through. We, 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 we need to, Lord, I know you know what I'm going through. And I know you, Lord, and your time is going to work this out. So, Lord, give me the patience. Give me the strength to make it through it, Lord. That's what I'm asking for you. And whatever it is that you're trying to teach me, whatever it is you're trying to work out in me, Lord, allow it to happen. Allow it me to accept it. Whatever God is, whatever you're going through, thank God for it. Because God can never go back on his promise. And he promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And those times that you think God has left you, God is the one who's carrying you through the situation. And we got to recognize that. And I think the church, if they recognize that God is trying us and, and proving us to see whether we'll stick with him through the tough times. I think we'll have a different old look. I think, I think, our, I think our collection will go up. I think our attendance will go up, and I think, I think sometimes our attendance and our Bible start just will go up. Because no, whatever the situation is, God will use it to work for his good. He's using it to work for his good. So we see that the...
that God uh, allowed the children of Israel to walk in 40 years. But, but, but we have to test some things so we can hold to it. Uh, Paul says in our text, I beseech you, brethren. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, when you prove some things, church, you got to hold to the things that you prove. And don't forget. A lot of times, we prove some things and we forget when situations and problems come, what will work. You know, David was not like that. David was not like that. David, when he proved some things, when a big situation came, guess what he said? When somebody trying to let him use something else, David says, I have not proven that. David and, 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 and First Samuel, First Samuel, get it for me, brother. First Samuel, let's look at verse number 37. See, when you prove some things, and we look at verse number 37 and 39, you got to hold to the things you prove. And sometimes we allow situations to allow us to go and try to grab onto something else. Or use something else what somebody else is telling us is good. When you prove God will work in a way, you hold to God's way and not to whatever man will tell you was better than that. See, David understood that. David understood that in verse number 30, uh, 20, uh, 37, the Bible says what, brother? Uh, chapter uh, 17, chapter 17. I didn't say the chapter. It is chapter 17 of, 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 of 1 Samuel 37. And David said, moreover, mm hmm Mm -hmm. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Mm -hmm. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he attempted to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with thee, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he took his staff in his hand, and chose him five. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> oh, don't go no further. You you get enough. I I, I was you, you I going to uh, verse forty right? I I forty one. I only want thirty nine. I told you go a little further. See the point that I'm making here. David Saul uh, uh, wanted to give David his armor to go and fight. This Philistine, which David looked at this Philistine and said to the armies of the Lord, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to defile of the armies of the living God? David understood with God, he is more than conqueror. He has the majority with God. And David said to, 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 to Saul, he says that, that, that man, when I was manning the sheep, uh, a lion came, and, 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 and with my armor, I was able to slew, and the Lord delivered me uh, uh, from, the, from the hands of the lion, and, and, and a bear came, and God, God delivered me from the paws of the bear. Uh, so Saul, when he heard it, he says, okay, uh, you can go there, but let me, let, me, let me try and dress you up so you can be able to fit. Sometimes folks try to dress you up, but they put too much on you because you haven't proved those things. You know, sometimes folks try to give you some, some stuff that you haven't proven for you to try. See, when you have tried God, and you have tried God, you should know that God work. Not in some situation, but in every situation. God work in your family situation. God works in your job situation. God works in the church situation. God works in every situation. So David told 
Saul, I have not proven this. He, first of all, he tried to walk with all that stuff. <laughs> David tried to walk on his attorney. I can see David saying to Saul, you try to get me healed up in here. You know, when somebody puts something on you that you haven't tried, David said, I, I haven't proven that stuff. So David says, I, I, I killed the bear with what, what I have, and, and God was with me with that. And that's what I'm going to use today to bring down this, this circumcised Philistine. So, so brothers and sisters, when, when you know what works, use it. Rely on it. Rely on it. One of the writers says that I will wait on the Lord. He says those who wait on the Lord shall mount up with wings like eagle. Those who wait on the Lord will run and... Yeah. See, 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 I'm going to wait till my change come. Because I know when God fix it, it's going to be well fixed. I know when God fix it, it's not going to be too late because God is always. See, those things we know. That's what we know. We got to hold to what we know and what we have proven. So what you, what you do while you're waiting, you just give God praise. You just got praising God because I know, God, you're going to fix it after a while. I know you're going to straighten it out. I have proven that you will straighten it out, but God, give me the patience as I go through this situation. So I know you're going to fix it. Yeah, it'd be like Shock Rock, me, Shock, and Ben and Go. He says, if God don't deliver us, my, if my God don't deliver us, I still not going to bow down. And God, if you don't fix it, just teach me how to accept it. You know? God, if you don't fix it, just, think, just give, me the, uh, give me a different mind how to think about it. Because God, God knows why he don't, he's not fixing it. You know why? God has tested our hearts. He has tried our hearts to see if it, he, he knows what we can handle. So he ain't fixing it. So we need to prove God. And hold to God's unchanging hands. So Paul writes to the church at Rome. And he tells them to be not conform to the world. See, there's a reason why we, not, we don't need to be conformed to this world. Because this world won't work for us. It just, it just don't work for us. You know, when you conform to this world, we try to use stuff in this world, and it'll always let you down. It will always come up short. But, 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 but he said, be transformed by renewing your mind. That you may be able to prove what is that good and, and acceptable will of God. You know, the thing that the church needs to do more than anything, and we'll probably talk about this another time, is to seek what is acceptable to God. Because everything you give God is not acceptable to God. See, everything you do and feel good about is not acceptable to God. And God only accepts the things that are acceptable to him. So in 1 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, th chapter 13, uh, and, and, and verse number 5, the Bible says, what does the Bible say? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 13, examine yourselves. Watch this. Examine yourselves. To see whether you be in the faith. It says, prove your own selves. 
In, in other words, you need to be about testing yourselves to see if you're on the right track. If you're offering God what he requires. Examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. What's the, uh, the remainder of that ver verse, my brother? Know ye not? Know ye not? Your own selves? Now that Jesus Christ is in you? That Jesus Christ is in you? you Don't you know that Jesus Christ is in you? So, brothers and sisters, let's hold to that which is good. Let's hold to that which worked for us. That's all we need to do. It will work if you just wait on the Lord to fix it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get too short of patience. Yeah. Sometimes we want it now. Yeah. And, and God knows best. Yeah. He knows it don't, won't work if you get it now. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you'll be right back to him trying to fix the stuff that you just got trying to fix. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to, that's what happened to Sarah. <laughs> Sarah asked God for the child, go and try to fix it. Then I asked God to try and take away the child that he, she got because <laughs> it got, sometimes when we ask God for something and we try to fix it, then as we ask God to fix the stuff that we just messed up. And that's why we just need to just wait on the Lord. Just wait on God. God will fix it. He can fix it right. Hold to God. Hold to God. Always, in every situation. And it's going to work out. It will work out, brothers and sisters. It will work out. Young folks, it will work out. Try him. It will work out. And no matter how long it takes, it will work out. And when, when God fix it, how long it takes, it will seem like nothing. That time will seem like nothing. So just hold to God. God will fix it. So as we, as, we, as, we, as we look at this lesson and as we come to the end of this lesson, let us, let us have the mindset today as we go forward that we're going to do things God's way. I'm going to stress about it. I'm going to cast all my cares on him for he cares for me. I'm going to let it go. You know, I'm going to let go and I'm going to let God. You know, let's do things God's way. Because God is there for us. And he'll never leave us. As our song leader come and as we stand, the song of invitation, if you need prayer for anything, if you have not been trusting God the way that you need to, if you've not been trying God and allowing God uh, to be the head of your life in every situation, uh, we stand willing and able to pray for you as our song leader sing the song of encouragement as we stand. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us take.